Hi, so what we're going to do today is design a snowflake to be laser cut using Tinkercad's code blocks setting. So once you've logged into Tinkercad, go to your dashboard and click code blocks on the left hand side. Um, then click create new code block. And the plan is to get to a nice blank new window, create a new design. And you've got a big blank screen here. So over here, um, on the right is where your design will be. This big blank bit in the middle is for your code. And on the left is all the different code blocks that you can use to drag together to make an interesting shape. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create the center of my snowflake by creating a new object. And so that I remember what all these different parts of the project are, I'm going to rename it center. Um, I think that my snowflake should have a star in the middle, so I'm going to choose a star and connect it up here like this, and then click play, and you can see what the star looks like. Um, so the laser cutter cuts things out of a flat piece of material, which means that rounded shapes that are different at the bottom to the top are not going to work for this project. So this paraboloid and this rounded roof is not going to work. Um, to help you see what the laser cutter is going to see, you can change the perspective by using this little box here to view it from the top. And you can also change the perspective slightly to make it flat instead of perspective. Just changes it a little bit and makes it a bit more flat looking. So because we're going to be cutting this out of material on the laser cutter, we start with a flat piece of material that is three millimetres thick. So to make um, it easier to see what's going on with our design, it makes sense to make all the parts of our design also be three millimetres thick. Because I know that they're all going to be the same, I can use the maths blocks to create a variable. And I'm going to rename this variable thickness, and I'm going to set that thickness equal to three. So this means we can use this variable and we can tell things to be a certain thickness. So they'll all be exactly the same. Um, so we've got a star, which we've seen over here, and you've got more options for this star if you click this little arrow button here. We've got things to change its shape and size. So the thing I'm going to change first is the height of it. So instead of being 10 um, millimetres thick, I want it to be 3. Instead of piping 3, I'm going to use this data block. So our new variable thickness has now shown up here. And if I pop that in there, our height is now going to be equal to the thickness, which is three, instead of what it originally was of 10 millimeters. So just writing three in here would do the same job, but it means that if you ever want to change the thickness, you'll have to go into every shape and change it every time. So because we know they all want to be three, this variable just makes it a bit easier to see what is going on. Um, our star is currently still 10 millimeters thick because it doesn't change until we run our code, run our changed code. So if I press play now, it will change the height to be three millimeters instead of 10. And you can see there it is much thinner than it was before. So I'm gonna put the perspective back to how it was and change a few other things to do with the star. Um, I'm going to give it six sides instead of five because I think that will look a bit nicer. Um, and I'm also going to change the radius. So the radius is the distance between the middle point and one of the outer corners. And it's currently 20 millimeters, which is two centimeters, which I think is quite large for the center of our snowflake. So if I change it to 12, that's a little bit more than one centimeter, and it's just going to be a little bit daintier, um, make it easier for us to add things to it afterwards. So for my next step, I'm going to rotate this star so that one of the spokes is pointing directly upwards, just because it's going to make my life easier later when I start adding some spokes to it. So over here on the modify section, I've got a rotate block. So let's see what happens if I just run this block as is. We get our star, it rotates it, but it's rotating it in a different direction to the one we want it to. It's using a different axis to rotate around. So let's change from X to Y. 
and see what happens. Again, it's gone in the wrong direction. So now let's try Z and see what it does here. Ah, so Z is going to keep things on the work plane, keep them nice and flat, how we want them for the laser cutter, um, instead of the other two, which are going to make it come up at different angles. Um, <clears throat> I think 90 has also got a bit further round than I need it to, so I'm going to change my angle to make it not do any unnecessary work. And an extra trick that I'm going to show you, you can change the speed up here as to how quickly it runs your code. So that is much quicker than it was before. So as you add more and more code, it's going to take longer and longer to check your changes. So upping the speed means you can get um, to the end a little bit later. The final thing that I'm going to do to the centre of my snowflake is add a hole in the middle. Um, just for fun, really, but also you could put a string through it so you can hang it somewhere. Um, so to do that, I need to add a new shape into my object. I'm going to pull over a cylinder, which is going to give me a nice round centre. So let's see what it does when I run that code. We've got quite a large cylinder there, so it's a lot... Um, wider than we want it and it's also a lot taller than we want it. So let's expand the options and we can make the height the thickness again. So that is in the data blocks. So that's going to change and make sure that it's not too tall. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to change the radius so that it's not cutting out all of the, all of the um, stuff. So let's try making it um, Six. So that's half the size of the radius. Let's have a look at that. That looks like it might work, um, but if you look closely, you can see that it's going to cut each of the spokes of my star away from each other. We'll have lots of individual triangles, which is not very useful. So let's change the radius, make it a bit smaller. That looks more like it. We'll also make it a hole instead of a solid shape. OK, we're almost there except that they're still two entirely separate objects. So the last thing that I need to do to combine these two shapes together is create a group, which was in the modify men um, menu. So this is going to make the cylinder and the star become the same shape and cut that hole out of the star. So let's press play. There we are, perfect. We've got the center of our snowflake. I'm going to start working on the spokes of my snowflake now and I don't want anything that I do to the spokes to affect the centre because I'm quite happy with the centre. So I'm going to create a new object and this one is going to be my spoke. Um, so I'm going to choose a shape to start my spoke. I might have a cylinder um, and we can change all of the options the same way we did before. I'm going to make that a bit smaller than the hole and I'm going to change the thickness. Now this is going to put your new shape right in the center, which isn't quite where we need it. But luckily there is a move block that we haven't used yet. So I'm going to move this a little bit away from the center and we've got the start of our spoke. I've added in a few extra bits to my spoke just to make it cool. I've added another box and the cylinder. And the last thing that we need to do is create a group to make them all be one piece. To add more spokes, what we need to do is add a new object. This is going to be our pattern. We want lots of the same object happen over and over. So what we'll do first is copy the spoke, our original spoke. So this will put two spokes right on top of each other, which isn't all that useful. So what we want to do is rotate one of those spokes because we'd like it to come out of one of the other parts of the star. So remember our z-axis is what is flat and 60 degrees should take us to the next spoke and let's see what that does. So that is not quite what we expected. It is rotating around the centre of the spoke instead of the centre of the whole work place. So what we need to do is change the pivot point and we can find that in the maths menu to choose the x, y, z coordinate. Zero, zero, zero is dead center, so it will now pivot around the center instead of around itself. 
there we go we've now got two spokes on two different parts of the star so we can save ourselves time by instead of adding this in lots and lots of times we create a loop so we're going to ask this to repeat itself multiple times so, and so we'll ask it to copy the spoke and rotate the spoke and we've got one two three four five six spokes so we'll ask it to do it six times and let's have a look at what it does so um, unfortunately it's going to create each spoke at the top and rotate it by 60 degrees what we want is for each time it goes around the loop for it to increase the angle. So it's 60 the first time and 120 the second time. To do that, we need to create another variable. This time it's the angle and we want to set the angle that it moves to our new variable. So to start with, it is 60 and after it's done it once, we'd like it to change the angle by 60, which means it will add 60 to the original 60, so the second time round it will be 120. So let's have a look and see if that does what we want it to do. Perfect. So the next step would be to create a group, because we want all of these parts to be the same project, we want them all to be attached to each other. But group only works on our object, so it's not going to attach the star to our spokes. So before we group it, what we need to do is add a copy of the center of our um, snowflake. But then what we're gonna end up with is two centers and two original spokes. So the other thing to do is to delete those extra objects after we've created our group. So we no longer need the um, spoke, we no longer need the centre, all we need is our nice new pattern and our copy of the centre and then everything should be nicely grouped together. So we'll have a look one last time, make sure it adds everything together, so we're getting our um, rotation happening here, then it's going to add our extra centre, group everything together and delete those extra parts. Before exporting this for the laser cutter, we want to do a little check. Give it a rotate around and make sure that it is as it looks. If anything has gone wrong, see if you can work out where it is by looking through your code and doing some debugging. When you are happy, we want to give it a new title. Um, so I'm going to say that this is my file and it is a snowflake. And now I click export up here on the top right. And .svg is the file format we would like for the laser cutter. It's downloaded my file and I'm going to open it to see what it looks like. So this here is the outline that the laser cutter is going to cut out. I'm pretty happy with that. I think it looks exactly as I wanted. This is my final design now that I've cut it on the laser cutter. I'm pretty happy with that. I think it looks really cute. But there are lots of other options you can use in the code blocks menu. Um, so have a play, see what you can design. I look forward to seeing what you come up with.